Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Well, in the last episode, we built a 135th scale military tank. And in this episode, we're going to build a diorama for it. All right, well, if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. All right, well, today's going to be a fun video. We have a lot of scenery work to do, so let's get to it. So here is the base that we're building our diorama on. And I did a quick drawing just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. So you'll notice that there is a second tank that I have to build that goes right there. And we'll do that later on. But for today's episode, we're going to build this entire diorama. Now to start with, you'll notice up on the top, there are some uh, structures that are pretty destroyed. Those structures are actually kits. And the kits are from Foss scale models. And here are the two kits that we'll be building. The kits will be key in providing us the correct scale. For example, here we have a great example of steps. So we'll use that in the rest of the diorama. And then also we have cinder block. And we'll be building or creating some cinder block for the diorama, but we'll base it off of the size of this kit. And then this structure will give us the size of our red brick. Okay, next we're going to work on this little carved out area that we cut. Uh, it gets two drain pipes sticking out of it. Now these pipes Okay, so the first thing we got to do is cut out two holes. And I'm just going to quick use my Dremel tool. Next, I want to make metal plates that uh, go around the opening. So we'll take these out. We're going to use um, just some cardboard and we're going to use a circle template. Okay, now we'll cut out the center. Okay, our little metal plates are done. Next, we're going to put some rivets on there. And we're using these little beads you can see there's a lot i think i got this at michael's okay this may take a while okay so i just quick uh, sprayed a primer on these now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this with a a stone uh, and the stones are cut from pink styrofoam. It's actually going to end up looking like maybe it's made out of cinder block. Okay, so I just brushed on a dark brown and the paint is still wet. And now I'm going to sprinkle on, it's already starting to dry, but I'm sprinkling on uh, baking soda and some baking powder. And we're really gonna focus on the bottom of it. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll give it another coat of brown. So using a sponge, I sponged on thicket, then let that dry, then very little of sea glass. And 
and then the bottom is the uh, rust colors from ammo but you can see what really sells it is adding that texture next we're going to paint our wall and i'm using a gray as you can see i use a lot of this gray so i just go to home depot and buy an entire quart I just got my brush wet just kind of doing a wash over it letting all that gray uh, wash down into the cracks now we'll paint some random stones we're going to use medium gray and iced coffee okay so this is really dry it's been drying for hours what we're going to do now is we're going to put a wash over it and we're using dark wash uh, there's the number and this is acrylic and i shook this extremely well it's just a very thin wash you can see i'm using water with it it's wet right now but hopefully you can see what that wash does to it okay next we're going to do some dry brushing on it and i'm actually using slate gray it's funny, I tried dry brushing with this now and it's just kind of runny. It's just hard to achieve the uh, look that I want. So the uh, dry brush paints are just, they're thick. And I don't know, you can just dry, get a better look with it, I think. I think they have more pigment in it. Now I'm just going down. I'm just brushing down. Okay, now we'll put in our pipes and streak some rust down at the bottom. Okay, let's use Earth Brown. Okay, now while that's wet, let's take I think this is old rust. The name and numbers have worn off. Now let's take a dark brown rust. I'm kind of following the cracks of the, uh, the blocks. All right, we'll put a green wash. And then while it's wet, we'll take some fine turf, burnt grass. The yeah, green wash was a watered down light avocado. Okay, so I've started this wall and I've done a lot of carving on it. Okay, so the base color is finished. So I just used a gray and then for the tan, I used chalk paint called Cocoon. I've been putting a lot of value on using City Dark Dust. That's the light dirt that's kind of washing down the wall. And then in all of the bullet holes, I'm using Farm Dark Earth. So on top of our wall, we're gonna put, I mean, there's a street up here, so we're building a little retaining wall that goes like this. Then on top of that retaining wall, we're gonna cap it with these stones. Now the retaining wall up here is made out of regular brick and I'm using the brick off of our um, plaster piece from Foscale Models. So you can see the brick there. So I'm carving some brick there. And some there. And then we may, I cut some little trim. I may put some decorative trim along the bottom of it. Now I also need to make a few bullet holes. So I just put my knife in there.
It's that easy. Okay, these are ready to paint. First, we'll start with our tan color. Again, Cocoon. Okay, so I first painted the brick with Dark Rust, and then I did a little bit of dry brushing with Terracotta. Now, I'll paint some individual um, red brick here and there. Then we'll put a dark wash over the brick area. Then we'll just simply add some value and some streaks running down. Just kind of dirty it up with our city dark dust and farm dark earth. Okay, well, we need to do a lot of carving. We need to have this all broken away, just like this. And then we need to have some broken away down here, exposing the side of the stairs. And of course, a lot of bullet holes. All right, so let's take this over to the bench and start doing some carving.
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just realized I'm not talking. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I just used brown paint and painted the uh, styrofoam. Now I'm just sprinkling on a thin layer of real dirt. I'm going to go a little heavier around this uh, rock that I made. The uh, rocks on here are just from molds and I just poured plaster in them. Now we're going to spray the dirt. Now we're going to put on some patches of grass. Let me move this over a little bit. There we go. <laughs> So I've just been tearing apart a old uh, grass mat that I had. And you can buy grass mats at um, Scenic Express. The only reason I use a, a grass mat is because I don't have a static grass applicator. I'm sure someday I will get one, but I just don't have one yet. So you just get yourself a grass mat and you can use the entire sheet and lay it down if you want to or you can just pull it apart like what I do and just glue on the patches of grass. And It looks like you used a static grass applicator. Then these are just little weeds that I'm pulling off of here and just sticking it into the wet paint. Now we need to get some weeds along that wall. So this is Super Tree Armature. And I just simply spray hairspray on it and sprinkle green turf on it. Now what I do is I use this for weeds. These are perfect for 135th scale. Coffee break. Now we need to get some branches glued over here. So the branches are off of the uh, sagebrush, and I get this here in Colorado. Now after it dries, if there's any areas that are too dark, uh, we'll just do a light earth color and um, dry brush maybe over some of the dirt. We can even dry brush the uh, grass. So we'll just let everything completely dry and then tomorrow I'll look at it and see if I need to do any dry brushing to it. Let me quick show you how I do running water. So I've created this small little diorama for the example. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of plastic and it's thick. This is like from a toy package like from an action figure where regular acetate for windows that come in kits is too thin. Uh, we're going to use hot glue on this and it will melt this. So you want something that is pretty sturdy, pretty thick. I cut a, a strip and you want to bend it. Fold it all the way over so that it has a good fold and then fold it back. So you want it to look like an L. Now, it's kind of tricky figuring out the length because you want it to bow out a little bit. You don't want it to just be straight. Now I'm going to cut this at an angle. I'll show you up close. 
Now we're gonna take super glue. And I know what you're thinking. It's gonna turn the plastic white and that's okay, that's what you want. So I put it on that tab at the top and then at the bottom. No, oh, I forgot to bend it a little bit so it's bowed. I'm gonna hold it there for a second, let it dry. Now we're gonna use hot glue. And let me plug this in. Now because we're using hot glue, you want a rock or plaster. You want something at your base because if you try to do it straight on the styrofoam, the hot glue will melt it. Now we're just using clear glue. Okay, the gun is heated up. I apologize if it's kind of gross and messy looking. <laughs> I let my daughter borrow this to do uh, to work on cosplay. Uh, she was making a costume, and this is how it was returned to me. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start at one side. Start in inside the pipe. Go down one side, up the center, back down, and it's great because if you don't like it, you can just take that whole piece out of there, cut a new piece glue it in and it's done now you want to take a gloss a glossy varnish and take a brush and paint it over your rocks and in some areas you can even add more glue I wanted to quick show you the second tank that I'll be building someday for the diorama. So it'll be all green and of course I'll probably put some rust but I'd like to do um, bullet holes make it really beat up looking and possibly make it look like it caught fire inside so there'll be um, black soot on it and So for the background, I just have some printed brick. And then I did a little bit of painting on the top of it. Now we'll get this glued in place. Okay, so again, we used our chalk paint, Cocoon, and put a base coat on this. Then I painted the uh, brick work. And now I'm using pigments and I'm starting with City Dark Dust. And then we'll go in with a darker one, Farm Dark. Farm dark. Okay, now we'll go to the darker one. Again, it's Farm Dark Earth. And we won't do as much of this. It's pretty dark. So we'll start with maybe the bullet holes. Next, I'm working on some doors for the diorama. And I'm just using strip wood and I take my saw and scrape over it, pressing pretty hard to leave some grain in the wood. I then stain it with murky brown and then black. 
And these stains are from Best. And then uh, for the white, I used light buttermilk. And all I do is I take my paintbrush and almost hold it sideways. And after it's fully loaded with paint, lightly drag it. Lightly drag it down. This is a double door and what I've done, it's for this here. And I simply traced that rectangle onto a piece of cardboard. So these aren't glued on there yet. So there is our rectangle. This is actually mat board. And then I uh, glued a header on the top. So again, I just scraped it with my saw blade to give it some texture and then stained it. Actually, before I stained it, I took this little pick, anything sharp, and I put a bunch of holes in it for to represent knot holes. Now, I'm just gonna take my glue. I'm only gonna do half at a time because I don't want it to... to Okay, there's a little bit of space right in the center between the two doors. Now we'll glue these on. I'm gonna be using that as a guide for the height. Now, I want these doors to be red, but not a bright red. So let's mix up a color. First, we'll start with brick red. Then we'll use a uh, true red. This is almost empty. Then we'll lighten it a little bit with terracotta. Using my little dental pick tool, I'm putting nail holes in there. Okay, now, using a small brush, We're going to do each individual board. Let me zoom in so you can see this better. I'm just lightly dragging it over it.
Now, not only is this uh, based on technique, but it's based on real life. So it's going to be protected under these boards. So that paint's going to stay. It's going to be um, heavier with the red paint under these boards. And it's probably going to be a little bit heavier on top. And then for these cross boards here, you're going to want to stay in the center because it would chip on the edges and be a little heavier in the center. So you just want to look at some photo reference maybe before you start. And another key is to texture the wood first with your um, with your the edge of your saw blade and a wire brush you can take your exacto knife and put lines in it but you want to rough it up before you stain it um, that'll give you texture when you go to paint it The broken glass on the diorama is clear acetate and it was provided in the kits. But you can get clear acetate on Amazon and you can buy whole packs of it. And then just maybe do a Google search for broken windows. You can print it out and um, if, if you can't draw, uh, I quick drew these for an example. But if you're not a good artist, you can print out pictures and trace it and shrink it down to the correct size, whatever O scale, HO, and then just cut your acetate to look like broken glass. Okay, I'm making another wall section. Um, I sliced some of the pink styrofoam on the uh, Proxon cutter and it's pretty thin, but then what I did was I took sandpaper and sanded it really thin near the edges. Now I'll just take my um, X-Acto knife, put cracks in it, a couple bullet holes, and paint it tan. I first made a pattern to make sure that it was the correct shape for the wall. And then once I had this um, the way I wanted it, then I just simply cut it out of the foam. So here is the paper pattern that I made. And there's our wall. And you can see I added some stone to match what was already on here. All right, next we need to add a lot of rubble and fallen brick and debris on this diorama. Now, my good friend Doug, who designed the uh, two structure kits that we used, um, he suggested taking a terracotta pot, this did have a terracotta pot on it, and wrapping it in a towel and taking a hammer and smashing it. And this is the perfect color for all of our broken and fallen brick. And then we'll get that all glued in place. You know, I have learned so much from this build and it's really got me excited about the expansion on the layout and moving into the city because I wanna do a lot of brick 
and stucco and if i can do this type of work in ho scale uh i think it's just going to look incredible uh, just like the tank video that I put out recently, I learned so much that I'm anxious to apply now to my layout. Uh, because my layout, I want it to be the best work that I can possibly do. So it's nice to experiment with scenery and brickwork and this type of stuff on a small diorama like this and then apply those techniques to my layout. Okay, so you can see I've started adding some rubble. Um, I even started adding leaves. And I've got ground up leaves. And then I have these. And it's nice to be able to remove the trees just by having those nails. So then they can just be put right back in place. And I still need to get some gray uh, stone. Um, I'll chip it out of styrofoam and paint it gray and spread that around too. Okay, first I sprayed it using a fine mist spray bottle. Then I used half water, half glue. I know it's pretty scary looking right now, but now what we want to do is any extra glue. We just want to kind of soak it up with a paper towel. All right, now we'll let this sit and completely dry. I am extremely proud of this project. Um, I've just learned so much from this. It has 
definitely taken my modeling skills to the next level. Um, I highly recommend trying your hand at a different scale or um, a small diorama, uh, something that you can finish in a week or two. It just really improves your skills. And not just that, but it helps build confidence as a modeler. It allows you to try new techniques, something different that you're not used to. And uh, when you see the end result, um, chances are you'll be very proud. And again, it'll just build confidence, which completely helps. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.